Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome officially to the channel. This is as you know from the intro of a series where I go into odd game accessories or peripherals that developers made to either get us more into the game mentally or physically. Today, well, this one, this is, well, a concept made to replace your analog sticks to an extent. Let's take a look at the Negcon controller from Namco. The Negcon controller was the creation of designer Satoru Kiriyama best known as the production manager of Ridge Racer. Got the idea while watching a fellow employee playing a racing game on the Famicom while simultaneously turning and tilting the controller in the direction the car was turning in the game. This gave him an idea of a controller that could actually twist and turn to perform movements in the game. It didn't really take long for Namco's console division to get wind of this idea, and they found it a pretty drastically different idea from anything else on the market and wanted to run with it. So. They began to think of a way they could actually bring it to market, where it could possibly make some interesting new game concepts. They began looking at games for inspiration, coming in finally into racing games. They looked at the steering wheel controllers of the time, wanting to create a controller that allowed for a quick, responsive turns around corners and tracks. It was suggested that the controller could be twisted to recreate the feeling of a steering wheel. A few designers were a little bit afraid that the controller would turn out to be too fragile, but they still managed to work out a pretty feasible design. Once the controller was ready and released, reception overall to it was actually pretty good, with EGM giving it rave reviews for its unusual design and method of control. Even in retrospect, the reception stayed mostly positive, with Time Magazine ranking it the fourth strangest gadget of all time, saying it stands apart as one of the few simultaneously bizarre and functionally intrepid of video game controllers, further going on the comment that its responsive button input and general suitability to racing games was great. GameSpot tended to agree, saying that the controller helped redefine the overall design of the traditional PlayStation controller, saying that it was strange and bizarre, yet responsive, and was an excellent controller for games like Ridge Racer. IGN also expressed disappointment towards the controller's poor sales, due to it being seen as strange by the general public, writing that it just goes to show where genuine innovation will get you these days. The controller, however, wasn't for everyone or really every game, as you may have guessed by its design. The lack of an L2 and R2 button would limit its usefulness somewhat, and its odd twisting motion would be a turnoff to many users. However, that didn't stop Namco from making it compatible and useful with a large number of its own games, such as Cyber Sled, which was a tank-like game that used two tank-styled analog sticks to control movement and two finger triggers to release a steady stream of bullets, making it a large part of the inspiration for the controller and a perfect fit for it to boot. It also worked with a lot of the racing launch games such as Wipeout, Ridge Racer, and even Need for Speed. It even worked well on air combat games like Air Combat. Not very cleverly named there. What do you guys think of the Nikon controller though? Are you a fan of this type of controller? Did you ever actually own one? If you did, how well did you like it? Let me know in the comments. Also, while you're there, if you could actually do me one more favor and give this video a like, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't, consider subscribing. It actually really helps my channel out a lot. However, for now, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. And until next time, happy gaming.